Get ready to experience the Changing Earth audio drama, brought to you by an incredible lineup of podcasters and survivalists from across the country, including listeners like you. The White Flag. What's up, T? Look at you, bouncing along. I understand you're part of the rescue squad now. Yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> For now on, you need to address me officially. Gotta keep the ranks in line and all. Yes, sir. It's serious stuff, Erica. You haven't been out there and seen the world in a while. We need to be a cohesive unit and clear communication lines. We can joke and party when the job is done, and we'll walk away safely. Yes, sir. Better. Come on. Let's go get your team. Who first? Harold. If he comes, so will his family. And he's on the way to Vince. He's over in the communication facility, right? Yup. He worked for Hewlett Packard before the quake. The man knows his tech, including radios, Morse code, and all that stuff. Good man to have on your team. Here we are. Can I help you, sir? We need to see Harold Duncan. Hold on, sir. Can anybody tell me what's going on? Mr. Duncan, I believe you know Rescue Recruit more. Y- yeah. I mean, yes, I do. Recruit more? Harold, I have been recruited as part of the rescue squad. And as a most trusted friend, I want you to join me on that team. I, uh... Perhaps you two would like to discuss this more privately? Of course, they can use the office back here. Erica, what is going on? Rescue mission? How is this happening? I can't believe you would do this, and I can't believe Matthew would put you and me in this position. So, what's up? Alex suggested our crew to Matthew for a rescue team. Then this is it? We're finally getting out of here? Not exactly. Daniel, Carmen, and Crystal have to stay here. What? Matthew said it was an insurance policy, and they're too young to be of use out there anyway. Oh, this is good. Have you talked to Vince yet? You know he's not going to be happy. No, you were first. I know he might be pissed, and I'm not thrilled either. But I have to get out of here. We don't know what the world has become, and we have to know if we're going to escape into it. And do you know what we're going to do out there? Rescue mission indeed. We're going to round up more refugees and bring them here to this crap hole. They're going over into that cage to get assimilated. You want to be a part of that? You didn't even think of it, did you? They're going to end up there one way or another, Harold. Oh, come on, Erica. Aren't you the one that used to preach Ben Franklin's famous line? Liberty dies when freedom is given up for security. Isn't that what you told the people in the riot? You gave them the reason to build that hothouse. No, you come on, Harold. If we don't do it, someone else will. This could be our last shot. This could be our chance to devise a real strategy for freedom. Okay, Erica. I'll tell Bitsy and the kids. I'm game. Really? Okay. We have to meet at Warehouse D at 1700. I'll see you then. You sure you know what you're doing? Sure, I'm sure. Sergeant Walker, we have a new rescue recruit. Time to go get Vince and Greg. Leaving Daniel behind? It's not going to be easy, is it? No, it's not, sir. I lost my family in the East Coast floods after the quake. I just got back from Afghanistan and spent time with friends. My dad was just getting out of the hospital after shoulder surgery. I was supposed to leave the next morning. The quake wouldn't have hit. I'm sorry. I had no idea. You know my story. The lone survivor of Sacramento 
Everyone knows the story, but I haven't heard from you. It's not something I like to talk about. I get that. We're here anyway. You ready for this? I guess so, sir. Hello, Terrence, Erica, what's going on? Is Mr. Sherman around? Uh, yeah, he's around here somewhere. Let me go get him. So what's up, buddy? Matthew asked us to be on the rescue squad. He did? What? Matthew wouldn't. He did. All of us? Almost. What do you mean? Not Daniel, Carmen, or Crystal. What? No, we do not split up. I know, but Vince... But what, Erica? Baby, this is our chance to see outside the gate. And a chance to be something other than slave labor. No. This is a chance to get separated as the whole world blows up in our faces. I understand. And I'm scared too. But... No, Erica. No but. Everything is fine. We're together and we're safe. Everything is fine? Maybe for you. You got your cushy job here in the gardens, sucking up to Matthew. Yeah, I have my family. And you know I would do anything for any one of them. Then stop. We are not leaving, Daniel. I want to go. What about you, Greg? It's been a long time since the quake, and the quakes aren't as bad anymore. And what about Penny and Mitchell? How will they feel about leaving their kids? I'll deal with them. Really, Greg? Okay, whatever. I can't believe you two. Baby, I know this isn't going to be easy, but we need a break from this place. I know, Erica, but I really don't want to leave Daniel. I'm going, with or without you. So that's how it is? You would leave me and Daniel to go on a mission for them? I don't want to go without you, Vince. What if you make me? Truly? Yes, Vince. Uh, I love you. And I love you too, Vince, but we're not going to get this opportunity again. Fine. We can talk about it later. No. We need an answer now. Your squad needs to meet at 1700 at Warehouse D. Okay, then. When do we leave, Terrence? All right, buddy. I can't let my wife go into the unknown without me. Excellent. Recruit Vincent Moore. Inform Dexter, Star, and Nancy. Recruit Sherman. Inform Penny, Mitchell, and Roxy. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, Yes, sir. sir. Recruit more. Let's go. We have to meet Commander Burns. Yes, sir. That wasn't so bad. I have a feeling I'll pay for that later. Don't know where I'm going to. Don't know what I'm running from. How you know I'm having so much fun. Go for TJ. We need you to make a detour on the way home. Where? A facility for children. Just after you cross the border into Central Region. A town called Valentini. 10 4. Grave wants the man in charge to be brought in. An extra transport will be sent. Send the kids to the northern camp. 10 4. You heard the man, Ryan. Looks like we're headed to an orphanage. You didn't tell him half our team was gone. He has a big mouth, and I could do this job alone from the sounds of it. I wish you saw a light up ahead, but there's nothing pulling me away from this dread. If I could be totally honest, it's all in my head I got first world problems. This is the town. That looks like our building up there, on the right. And there's the extra transport waiting for us. See? Easy job. 
We'll be in and out and back on the road in no time. Kids look strong, but look at those bruises. What's going on here? They wouldn't have sent me if it was good, Ryan. You a black shirt? You could say that. Would you take me with you? I'll train harder than anyone and fight better than anyone. What's your name, kid? My name is Guy. Guy Carlson. Hold that thought, Guy. I have some business to take care of, then we'll talk. I wish we could take them all. Imagine, training them from this age. It would save a lot of time. We wouldn't have to reprogram any of them. Can I help you, sir? Where's the man that runs this place? Salim Hussain is the headmaster in charge. I didn't ask who he was, I asked where he was. My apologies, sir. He's in his office. Through that door. Let me tell him your name. No, thank you. Sir, sir, you can't go in there. Sit down. Leslie, I told you I was not to be disturbed. I think you can make an exception. You're DJ Svensson. I am. You're coming with me. Would you like to willingly, or would you like to experience a beautiful touch of Sheila's sting? I'm not. You are. Make your choice. Don't touch that firearm. Wrong choice. Ah! Brian, zip him up and put him in the truck. What are we supposed to do now? We're going to a refugee camp. I think you are mistaken, sir. I am a landowner. Not anymore. What about them? Yes, sir. What about us? You're coming with me. All of us? Yes. The kids load up on the transport. Guy, you're with me. Yes, sir. Sir, we've been fighting for a week. We're losing too much of our forces and expending too many supplies. General Henderson wants Oregon and Washington back. What did General McClintock say? He gave the order and sent us the additional forces. The coastlines are toast, Major. This is a stupid battle. They're not budging. Stow that shit, you two. We need to lead these troops. We page. Spell some story. Major Virgis, the next load of ammunition just arrived. Chappie, distribute the ammunition to the teams. Yes, sir. Monroe, we're going to push the line and take that town today. Sir, there's another group of refugees at the gate, sir. Put them on a transport, make sure they get food and water. We'll ship them to Vegas. Yes, sir. that? Looks like they have an RPG in their arsenal. First Private Guthrie, take your team and get that weapon. Yes, sir. Johnny, go find Chappie and search the homes. Find the plans for the attack on the Capitol. If these people are plotting an attack like Henderson claims, we need evidence. Yes, sir. Guthrie, crap, let's back him up. Get our medics over there. Lay down fire on the west flank. Push them north. Major! I think 
found it. Get it. Major, I'm not gonna make it. Yes, you are. We'll get you to the hospital. And then what? Half my body is gone. I'll be a cripple living in a refugee camp. No one can predict the future. You know the truth. Kill me. What? No, we're gonna get you help. Just kill me. It's the best way to help me. I'm dying anyway. Monroe, where's that medic? You know he's right, sir. I'd want you to do the same for me. I know. Damn it! Sir, it's been an honor to serve with you. The honor is mine. You've been a good friend And this is the thing of him And I know it's never gonna end Cause you've been a good friend What are we doing here? Make your call, Virgis. Chappy, what have you found? Nothing, sir. They're getting food and supplies ready for winter. No sign of plans for attack on the capital. Pull your team out of the town. Don't take any. Mercenary forces, cease fire and pull back to the south of town. Monroe, bring your team and come with me. Get out that white flag and put it in the air. Here's your response, sir. There's a small group with a white flag coming our way. We want our land back. Like it was before the white man came. We will all die before we give it up again. I can see that. What is your proposal? I don't know. We were told you people were planning an attack on the new capital. You were told wrong. We just want to be left in peace. Free of all the white men. You can take them all. We want our home back. I can't guarantee that someone won't come to take it back, but I can guarantee it won't be me or anyone I command. You are an honorable man and a formidable warrior. I believe you will honor your word. There's been enough death. Take care of your people. Thank you. Monroe, Chappie, get these troops ready to roll out. We're not losing any more people in this fight. What are you going to tell McClintock? We lost. Look alive, we got another quake coming. Stow that gear, everyone hang tight. Go ahead. Lava approaching the town of Medina in Utah. They need immediate evacuation. Send out two teams. We're done here and in route. Out of the frying pan and into the fryer. <laughs> Story of our life. Please enjoy a quick word from our sponsors. Hey everyone, this is Phil Rabley from the Matter Effects Podcast, voice in the role of Cole Virgis. If prepping guns and politics sounds like your cup of tea, come check out the Matter of Facts podcast every Friday on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify with my co-host, Andrew Bobo. L. Douglas Hogan here, doing the voice of Swinson. You can also hear me on all major podcasting platforms at The Rising Republic. I'm also on YouTube, The Rising Republic Video Bites. I'll see you guys over there, and you have a marvelous day. Hey, fellow patriots, Bravo Echo here. Are you paying attention to what is happening in our great nation? Are you prepared? If not, come see us at HopeForSurvival.com. That's HopeForSurvival.com. Be safe and be blessed. Here on the homestead, we'd like to keep it simple. That's why we created Stasis, your resource for the highest quality freeze-dried apples direct from the source. All of our fruits are hand-picked, hand-processed, and hand-packaged just for you. This is a variety of freeze-dried foods unlike anything you've ever tasted before. Find out more at stasis.vip. And now back to the Changing Earth Audio Drive. The first thing we have to do is put you in uniform. Here's a t-shirt, wool socks, and camel pants. What size shoe are you? I'm an eight, sir. Really? Mom always said I was going to be tall or a short little shit with big feet. Guess I got the short end of that stick. <laughs> no pun intended? No pun fully intended. Go get changed. New clothes. Oh, that smells so good. 
new boots. So comfy. Okay, rescue group more. You need to report to Commander Donald Burns. Who is he? The big guy over there by the truck. Him? Yes, ma'am. Get going. Yes, sir. What are you waiting for, recruit? Oh, uh, nothing, sir. Commander Burns? Yes, ma'am. And who do we have here? Rescue recruit Moore reporting in, sir. Oh, yes. The ragtag group that Matthew was going to send over. Let me put it to you straight. I know the rumors about you, who you are, and that doesn't account for anything here. We have very little time to train you and your crew, so I need you to listen and follow my orders exactly. I mean exactly. Do you think you can do that, recruit? Yes, sir. Good. Follow me. Sit down. I do have to say that Matthew had his thinking cap on when he put your squad together. What do you mean? He didn't put us together. We did a long time ago. Don't question. Listen and do. That is your job here. And you already assured me you are capable of doing that. Yes, sir. Recruit, Vince Moore is your husband, correct? Yes, sir. As a master gardener, he will be out scouting for a truckload of quality dirt for the gardens here, as well as any seeds or usable garden items that he thinks we could use or would be useful in our garden. Understand? Yes, sir. Good. Recruit Harold Duncan is a communication and IT guy. He will be responsible for salvaging any useful equipment as well as establishing a hard line when we arrive. Understand? Yes, sir. Recruits Betsy Duncan and Penny Sherman are both medically trained and will further their training during the next three weeks. They will join with the med crew from Alpha Squad to treat any injured individuals we come across. Good, you're staying focused. Recruit Greg Sherman is a master builder with a lot of other trade knowledge. He will be your point man for structural salvage. You will need to make sure the buildings are sound enough to enter and salvage materials from. His training during the next few weeks will focus there. Now that brings us to the younger recruits, Star Moore, Dexter Moore, Mitchell Rollins, Roxy Rollins, Jen Rollins, Kim Duncan, and Rob Duncan. You know the strengths of everyone involved. What tasks do you think they can perform? Remember, you will also need a couple of them to manage your squad's chow detail. Uh, Star and Kim should definitely be on chow detail. Star is quite a chef, and Kim already works in the kitchen, so she's familiar with that job. Uh, Mitchell is Greg Sherman's stepson and quite a carpenter as well. I guess he should go with Greg. Rob Duncan has been working with Vince over at the gardens. He should go with Vince. Dexter is a smart boy and quite a fighter, too. He could go with Harold to help with heavy lifting and communications. Roxy has been studying fashion with Nancy, my mom, and she might need some help doing heavy lifting, so I would send Roxy with her. Oh, yes, your mother, Nancy Fisher. She will be in charge of fabric salvage, and we will literally bring home everything we can. Given her age... We will limit her PT time over the next few weeks, but I do need to make sure she is capable of going into the field. Honestly though, I'm excited to have someone with us who actually knows materials and what is worth bringing home and what's not. Totally out of my round. Well, I think that's it. Rescue Squad Alpha will occupy one bus and your Rescue Squad Beta will occupy the other. Are you still with me? Yes, sir, but... I need you to stay with me, recruit, and not fall behind. What am I supposed to do, sir? <laughs> You're the leader of the group. You follow Sergeant Walker's orders and make sure your crew is doing their job. Can you handle that? Yes, sir, I can. Good, then. Let's get to it.
DJ, good to see you, brother. Sergey, I have new recruits. Ryan, get them off the bus. Those are children, DJ. They are. Get them set up with bunks. Anyone who's not a fighter can go to school. What are we supposed to do with them? Train them. Teach them. They're the next generation. Did you talk to Mr. Lee? Are you questioning my order? No, DJ. Then do as I said. Yes, DJ. Guy, come with me. Yeah, okay. I like to think that over the years I've learned a thing or two. No longer just a scared little boy afraid of facing the truth. What's your problem? You're TJ Swenson? That's what he called me, isn't it? I knew you were a black shirt, but I didn't know you were. I'm their leader? Yes, sir. Would you have had the balls to walk up to me like that if you knew? Yes, sir, I want to fight. Good. I have a group of my most promising young fighters. I want you to join them. Yes, sir. TJ, sir. Rick, James, take a knee. TJ is here. Hello, TJ, sir. As you were, boys. Wayne, I have a new recruit for your team. This is Guy. There's a bunk over there, Guy. Thank you, sir. Get him a uniform and show him the program. Yes, TJ. Guy, work hard. Don't let me down. Yes, sir. DJ, good to have you home. How'd the pickup go? Like clockwork. Is that TJ? Yes, sir. Send him in here. What's his problem? Radio chatter from the north. It wasn't good, TJ. Great. I'm growing tired of all the things everybody says I should be. I just want to be left alone to do whatever I please. Hello, Mr. Lee. Close the door. Yes, Mr. Lee. Sit down. Yes, sir. What's the problem? The problem? <laughs> the problem is, you go north, and now I'm listening to chatter about an entire mercenary team that has gone missing. And speak of missing, where is Nate? You took him with you, didn't you? I did. You made that choice? I did. And where is he? Maybe he should watch what happens when you make the wrong choice. He's not home yet. What did you do? Where is he? He's disposing of the bodies. The bodies? Were you supposed to kill anyone? No, sir. Did I train you to make a cluster fuck out of every mission? No, sir. Then what the hell happened? You're in and out without incident. Char is taken care of, but a team of mercs found the vehicles. And? I had it under control. But one of them got the drop on me and Nate killed him, so I had to kill them all. You had it under control. What about your team? Where are they? I knew I could handle them. Your arrogance. I knew I should have sent Surge with you. I had it handled, but Nate... The one I told you not to take. Yes, sir. Come in. The kids are all sorted and bulked. The kids? DJ didn't tell you? No, we haven't gotten that far yet. The kids from the orphanage? Yes, Mr. Lee. You brought them all here? I did. Serge, get out! Yes, sir. When did you get so soft, TJ? The kid should have gone to the refugee camp. Maybe you have forgotten the pain. Should we re-examine that concept? They are strong, Mr. Lee. They'll make good fighters, thinkers, and whores. We won't have to recondition them. Plus, this kid guy? I put him in Wayne's team. And there it is. This kid pulled on your heartstrings so you saved them all. You want this kid. Then this business with Nate is over. Eventually, he will make a fine team leader, but not your protege. Nate messed up. He's going to have to face the consequences of those actions. Finally, you were talking sense. You will do it with Sheila for all your fighters to see. Yes, sir. What did you tell Commander Gray? Nothing yet. <laughs> You're just out there making calls on the fly. I thought it through. I'll face the consequences of my choices. Yes, you will. This is unbelievable. You're going to train until you're too weak to make dumbass choices like this. 
Call it what you want, but I stand behind my decision. Get out on that bag. No gloves. I don't want to see you again until your hands are dripping with blood. Now? I just got in. I need food. What did you just say to me? Don't you forget the initials on your back. Who do you belong to? You, Mr. Lee. Then get the hell out of here and get your ass on that bag. Yes, Mr. Lee. I won't forget that pain. My mind don't work that way. I won't forget that pain. Please enjoy a quick word from our sponsors. Hey everyone, this is Dale and Lisa from SurvivalistPrepper.net. I played the voice of Lautner. And I played the voice of Carol and Star. Over at Survivalist Prepper, we have the podcast, and I also have a new podcast that I'm doing with Brian Duff called The Duff and Dale Show. And you can find me on my YouTube channel, The Budget Equestrian. Hi, this is Sarah F. Hathaway, the creator of the Changing Earth series and the voice of Eric Moore. Visit ChangingEarthSeries.com to explore the novels behind the drama and the survival knowledge behind the stories. Join the Changing Earth membership program and get one week early access to the show. We appreciate you helping the Changing Earth world go round. Visit us at www.ChangingEarthSeries.com. That's www.ChangingEarthSeries.com. Hello, everyone out there in Internet Radio Land. This is Dave Jones, the NBC guy. And have I got a deal for you. Everybody that listens to Sarah's audio drama gets a special deal from me on Mira Safety Products. These are top quality protective gear used by armies around the world. You can only get that deal by emailing me at NBCGuy at ProtonMail.com. I'm quite concerned about what's coming next. Personally, I think we'll probably see food shortages and other disruptions. Are you prepared if things go wrong? Does your family have enough food and supplies on hand to last at least 30 days? If not, the time to prepare is right now. Don't wait another minute. To help you on your journey, I recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the leaders in self-reliance, and they have a four-week supply of emergency food that lasts up to 25 years in storage, so you never have to worry again. Don't put your family through the pain of hunger or standing in government food lines. Go to preparewithchangingearth.com today, and your emergency food will be shipped quickly and discreetly to your door. Those who know what's coming are using today to prepare. So visit preparewithchangingearth.com, the original Patriot Preparedness Company. Their mission is your survival. That's preparewithchangingearth.com. And now back to the Changing Earth audio drama. We got another quake coming. Look out, Chappie, that tree's coming. The road is screwed. Turn into this parking lot. Let's see if we can find a detour. Looks like it ends over there. We may have to do some four-wheeling, but we can make it. Here we go. Woohoo! I'm glad I came out here. This is exciting. Wait until you see the lava flow. You may think twice. Speaking of, we need to move. Those people are counting on us, and we need to get there before the feds. Wouldn't the feds help, sir? They'll save the supplies. They could care less about the people. How can they do that? Who's there to stop them? We are. There's the smoke. Where? See it out on the horizon? I see it. Uh, somebody's already here helping. Who? Maybe the feds are already here. I don't know, but you can see their trucks lined up over there. Look at those vehicles. Those are not federal transports. Oh, crap. What, Major? It's the Western Militia. Should I get the rifles ready, sir? No, we aren't doing any more killing today. If they're here to help, let them do it. But, sir, the feds are hunting them. They're on our bounty list. You heard my orders, Private. Yes, sir. The first priority is getting these people to safety, no matter what it takes to achieve that goal. Yes, sir. The march are here. Weapons ready. Stow that weapon, soldier. We came to help. We'll save our fight for another day. 
We've got people who were sheltering in the building to the north. The lava's at the bottom. We need a bridge up high to get them out. Monroe, take your team and get it done. Yes, sir. Chappie, get the supplies and go lend medical assistance. Yes, sir. Johnny, you're with me. Yes, sir. Private, park the vehicle along that line over there. At least it will slow down the lava. I can help you. No, you stay with me. Yes, sir. Do we have a problem, Private? No, sir. Good. Major Burgess, a moment of your time. What are you doing out here? The feds are en route, Cassidy. They will kill you or take you in for the reward. We need the people and the supplies. We didn't have a choice. You need to get the people you want loaded and go now. Major Burgess, status update. We've arrived at target location, salvage operation underway. We're en route. ETA 30 minutes. Stand by for evacuation orders. 10 4, we'll see you soon. Johnny, where did she go? She's over at the lead truck, sir. That's it, Cassidy. They are en route. I can't cover for you once they get here. I'll have enough to answer for as it is. That's it, guys. We're leaving now. Thank you, Burgess. I'll make it up to you. Yeah, yeah. Just get the hell out of here. We're gone. Sir, the vehicle's rolling, please. I'm not sure how long they'll hold. Monroe, status update. We're getting the last of them out now, sir. Get them all, Monroe. The beds won't leave anyone behind. Private, start loading any supplies in our truck. Let's get all we can before the feds get here. Sir, what did Chappie mean by they're not leaving anyone behind? The refugees hurt too badly. They won't transport them. What do they do? Shoot them or leave them to die on their own. What? We don't have time for this discussion now. Get as much as you can. Trust me, we're going to need it. Look for tires and oil. Yes, sir. Sergeant Patrick Bennett is going to train you for the next three weeks. You address the superior officers as sir and only speak when the superior officer speaks to you. Thank you for the introduction, Sergeant Walker. Squad, fall in. I know his voice, Vince. Did they put a deaf squad leader in charge here? Fall in line, recruit. Yes, sir. Follow me. Yes, yes sir. sir. Sit down. My name is Sergeant Patrick Bennett. I know you all have your stories as where you came from. I don't care. I know you all have skills that are valued. I don't care. I know you all think you know who you are. I don't care. For the next three weeks, I will tell you where you came from, I will tell you what you know, and I will tell you who you are. Are we clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Some warm welcome, isn't it, Mom? Erica. Is something funny, recruit? No, sir. I was just checking on the emotional status of my team, sir. <laughs> your team. What makes you think they're your team? Commander Burns said... I don't care what Commander Burns said. Didn't I just say that for the next three weeks, I will tell you what you know? Did I say that? Yes, sir. In that case, they are my team. I know, sir, but I thought... And there is the defiance I have come to know from Miss Erica Moore. You thought, I will tell you what to think. Since you have so much time to determine the emotional statuses of the other individuals in the room and enough energy to waste all our time, why don't you finish this meeting? seated against the wall what what sir matthew told me you are still training in martial arts don't you know how to do a wall sit yes sir but i don't understand get over there and sit your ass against the wall that is all you need to understand anyone else feel like thinking tonight good for the next three weeks we are all going to put your physical abilities to the test your afternoons will be spent training in your assigned details, but in the morning, you're mine. It is my responsibility to ensure that you will be an asset to the soldiers out there in the field and not a hindrance. Are we clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. We'll meet back here at 0500 in the morning to start. Matthew has instructed me to inform you that your children will be expected to report here in the morning as well. They will begin attending school with the landowner children tomorrow since you all will be occupied with mission details. Understand? Yes, yes sir. You are all dismissed. Except you, recruit more. How are we doing, Hopscotch? Comfy? <laughs> yes, sir. 
Excellent. Then you won't mind holding these books for me. No, sir. I'll be right back. What am I doing? I need to calm down and get myself together. I'm not going to blow this because of this jerk off. And why is his voice so darn familiar? Can he still see me? He wouldn't know if I took a break for a moment, but I would. Come on, dickhead, just open the door and get this over with. Understand this, Cupcake. Your team will all be occupied during their afternoons, but you, on the other hand, are my responsibility all day. I'm going to test you, Cupcake. I'm going to push you until you break, but I will never give up on you. Are you going to make sure they all stay alive? If I don't do my job, you won't be able to do yours, understand? Yes, sir. Are you ready to comply now? Yes, sir. Good. Give me the books. Do a little light reading while I was gone. No, sir. You can stand up now. Yes, sir. Stand at attention, woman. Yes, sir. Oh, you are standing. You're a short little thing, aren't you? No, I have to put up with short jokes, too. What did you say? I said, yes, sir. I am short. You're dismissed. I'll see you bright and early, and we will continue this tomorrow. Nighty night, sweetie pie. Good night, sir. enjoy a quick word from our sponsors are you worried about how dangerous the world has become in these days of terrorist attacks natural disasters or even a future collapse you need to be medically prepared to keep your family safe i'm joe alton md of store.doomandbloom.net where you'll find an entire line of uniquely designed medical kits and supplies for when help is not on the way for everything from individual first aid kits to the ultimate family medical bag, go to store.doomandbloom.net today. You'll be glad you did. Prepper Broadcasting Network is nine dynamic hosts, seven podcasts a week, live shows, chat rooms, daily updates, all on prepping, survival, and patriotism. Visit PrepperBroadcasting.com for your dose of self-reliance, and independence. Hi, this is Jane Austen, otherwise known as Survivor Jane, and the voice of Dolores Chapman. I'd like to invite you to my website, SurvivorJane.com, where I write in a conversational tone on topics of how better to prepare yourself and family. You can also find links to my books, What Could Possibly Go Wrong, Emergency Survival Hygiene, and my game book, Puzzling Over Preparedness. You can also find information on Prepper Camp, the largest three-day preparedness event in the country every fall, hosted by myself and my husband, Rick Austin. Disaster Coffee is fueling disaster relief in America. Our coffee is roasted to order and shipped to your front door. You cannot get it any fresher. Visit DisasterCoffee.com and caffeinate with a purpose. That's DisasterCoffee.com. And now back to the Changing Earth audio drama. Come in. Hey, TJ. I heard you got back in. How are you? Fine. Let me see your hands. Do they hurt? No, sir. Good. Get the hell out of here. What happened? He made some choices and needed a reminder of what happens when he makes the wrong ones. Didn't you, TJ? Yes, Mr. Lee. Maybe next time you'll evaluate your situation better. Go home. Yes, Mr. Lee. I'll come by later. Don't bother. Good night, Mr. Lee. Same old thoughts, same old memories. I live alone with a full-grown stranger inside. TJ, is that you? Yes. 
I made your favorite for dent. What happened to you? Your hands are dripping blood. Don't worry about it. Just get my dinner, woman. But... Get the food! Yes, TJ. Knock, knock, brother. What do you want? Sergei told me what happened. Where's your gauze? In the cabinet. Let me see. We'll put a proper boxer wrap on it. Sergei said you brought in a bunch of kids. Strong ones. And some good fighters. I did. But things went south up north? They did. I'll go with you next time. We will beat them so hard they won't remember who their mother is, let alone who they were chasing. <laughs> Nate will have to take the brunt of it. He fired the first shot to defend me. Don't worry, brother. We all know the pain. He'll learn it too. Mr. Lee wants me to do it. You have to do what you have to do, brother. Mr. Lee, Sergei, they're our family. Even though sometimes they act like assholes, they love us. There, you're all set. They'll heal stronger for the next beating. You want to stay? Teresa made spaghetti. How could I say no to that? There's no laughter these days Far too seldom do I get the chance to even put a smile on Dinner's my ready. Face. Make Yuri a plate too. It's already on the table. How did Kier take the message? Did you have to use Sheila? No. One snap in the air and that woman was petrified. You should have seen the look on her face. <laughs> I would have loved to. Now what? I'll get it. You relax. Yes, ma'am. I think I'll do just that. Commander Gray. Is TJ home? He is. Do you want me to get rid of him? No. Let's get this over with. Show him in, Teresa, and get me a bottle. Yes, TJ. Come on in, Commander. Thanks for seeing me and for work with Kira. Glad the mission went well. Mission accomplished. Damn, man. What happened to your hands? You didn't do that with her, did you? No. Headmaster at the orphanage? No. Okay. The mercs are chattering about our missing team. You didn't. It didn't happen there either. However, that was my team's fault. It was an accident and the person responsible will be held accountable. General Henderson wanted those kids processed. I was told you took them. I did. The general's concerned that your refugee population is not being infertilized. He wants anyone without papers processed. What about my fighters? Them too. And what about me, Commander? I've always done as he requested. I maintained order before he even asked me to. And he's kept you well supplied and your stock flowing. Don't fight this, TJ. We've left your compound alone for a reason. Don't give him a reason to assign a federal oversight committee. A what? We have them assigned to every other community in the central region. What pansy politician would dare step foot in my cities? Look, TJ, just do this once. Process everyone over 13. Then he'll be at peace and probably won't worry about it again. Here you go, TJ. Probably. Definitely. I'll make sure of it myself. I have your word? You have my word. Fine. DJ. But I get to select ten fighters that don't get the procedure. Five? Done. Including you? After this round, no federal interference. Your people, your communities, your call. Agreed. Great. I gotta get back. Take care of those hands. Drive safe.
Mother Grey, are you leaving? On my way out. Business to be done. Have a good night. DJ, my brother, I found these bottles of vodka lying around and needed someone to drink them with. Looks like you brought them to the right place. Teresa, grab another glass. Yes, TJ. I walk around town as a dog with a bone in it. Ain't anything that I can't. You boys enjoy your drinks. I'm off to bed. Have a nice night, Teresa. Must not stop, just get so drunk. I go. Chuck, what's up? Well, I had this bottle of whiskey lying around and I needed someone to drink it with. Come in. I'll grab another cup. Sit down, I got it. Let's crack that bottle. Come in. Good evening, Major. Private McClintock, you have the night off. What brings you by? I wanted to see if you would get some food and catch up. I acted like an ass when I got here, and I'm sorry. That's big of you to say, Johnny. Let's go grab some chow. Smiles breaking through the rain. The sun is burning. Just have a seat anywhere, fellas. Thank you, ma'am. There's a table toward the back where you can watch the door. You remember? Yeah, I do. Always sit in the back so you can see the door and the whole room. I love Virgis. It broke my heart when you left. I'm sorry, Johnny. I had my reasons. What would you fellas like to drink? We'll have a couple of beers. Coming up. What reasons? When I was fighting overseas, I was helping others survive tyrannical dictators. When all of this went down, I had to turn against my fellow countrymen. My government started to become that authoritative dictatorship. I was confused and I had to leave. But you came back. I did. Why? In my town, disaster after disaster kept happening. Then a group of refugees came. We helped them, but they still stole from us. The town was left without resources. Everyone became refugees, and we were put in the camp in Vegas. The state should have been resupplied, but the feds deemed the area west of the Rockies useless. They cut the resources. My dad was pissed. You sound like someone else I know. That woman? Cassidy? What do you know about her? Chappie told me she comes to Dolores. She looked important to those militiamen. Her father leads them. How do you know that? Because I do. Because you're working with them? Private Jessup told me about the fighters that should have gone to Vegas. What did he say? He said you're an excellent leader, and he would trust you with his life. He didn't tell anyone else, did he? No, he doesn't like doing collections, either. His family is in the Minneapolis camp. Service for freedom. Sorry about the wait. Here's your beers. What will you have? I'll have a cheeseburger. Sounds good to me. Coming up. You have beef out here? More like mystery meat, but it's usually good. Oh. So... Cassidy is pretty hot? She is, but she's a wild one. Even better. She's old enough to be your mom. Experienced. Still works for me. She's mine. <laughs> That's what I thought. Johnny, you can't tell this to anyone. Virgis, my dad, he, well, it was rough after you left. He started questioning his motives as well. You know our relationship hasn't been the best since Mom died, and he hasn't been there. Anyway, he's coordinating with the Southern militias. How do you know? I heard him talking with a man. Dixon was his name. He agreed with you and said that the Mercs should be a voice for the people. Why didn't he tell me? He knew you had to find your own path. He didn't want you putting your conscience on the line out of loyalty to him. All right, here you fellas go. Two burgers with Jerusalem artichoke fries. Are they good? They're unique. You fellas enjoy. But what does that mean? Try them and find out. Not bad, but not great either. Unique. Yep. Anyway, 
That's why Pops is spending so much time in the capital. He's keeping his eyes on the federal operation. Johnny, do me a favor. What's that? Don't call him Pops. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I won't call him Pops. What are we going to do? We are not going to do anything. You are going to follow my lead and keep your head down so I can bring you back to your father safely. What are you going to do? What the movement needs is a spokesperson. Somebody with a story that will captivate the people, and I think I may have found one. Time will tell, but until then, this stays between me and you. I got it. This burger's not bad. Thanks for stopping by and listening to the Changing Earth audio drama. Hope you enjoyed the adventure. This content is copyrighted in 2021 by author Sarah F. Hathaway. For a list of performers, music, and noise attributes, head on over to www.authorsarahfhathaway.com backslash changing earth. That's www.authorsarahfhathaway.com backslash changing earth. Special thanks to Zapsplat, freesound.com, and freemusicarchives.com for all the work that they do, providing great resources for free music and sounds. Without them, this project would not be possible. Much love to all of my volunteer performers who put hours in designing the characters that you love. We'll see you next time on the Changing Earth Audio Guide.